a secretive group of advanced and experimental aircraft known as X-planes are quietly maturing towards changing the way we see and leverage aviation technology the world over. These aircraft, being developed by a combination of Defense Department insiders and America's leading aerospace contractors, offer us a tantalizing glimpse into the future of air power. Let's talk about the modern era of X-Planes. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. X-Planes have been a part of American aviation for 77 years now, dating back to the very first experimental aircraft ever to be given the moniker, 1946's Bell X-1. The rocket-powered X-1 predates the establishment of the Air Force, originally flying under the banners of the U.S. Army Air Force and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA. An X-1 named Glamorous Glennis would go on to become the first crewed aircraft to achieve supersonic flight in October of 1947, with flying ace Chuck Yeager at the stick. Twenty years later, another rocket-powered X-plane, this time piloted by William Pete Knight, would set yet another groundbreaking speed record, this time one that still stands today, when his X-15 broached the notional hypersonic barrier, screaming across the sky at Mach 6.7. But X-Planes aren't just about speed. In 1984, the backward-winged Grumman X-29 became the most unstable aircraft ever built. This aerobatic aircraft design didn't catch on because of a number of complications, but its innovative digital fly-by-wire flight controls and its use of advanced lightweight composite materials would go on to become standard fare in both tactical and commercial aircraft designs to follow. Then in 2013, Northrop Grumman's X-47B became the first pilotless tactical aircraft to perform both takeoffs and landings aboard an aircraft carrier. Two years later, it made history again by participating in the first ever autonomous aerial refueling. These capabilities, of course, are now the backbone of the U.S. Navy's MQ-25 Stingray program, an uncrewed drone refueler designed specifically for carrier operations. With more than 72 aircraft given the X-Plane designation over the years, America's experimental aircraft programs have become renowned, not just for their groundbreaking firsts, but for their ability to bring new technologies, materials, production methodologies, and even aviation concepts to fruition, many of which go on to become foundational aspects of aerospace development in the years that follow. And armed with that understanding, it's tough not to get a little bit excited when we look at the X-Planes in development today. Because in a real way, it's like peering through the looking glass at what aviation technology very likely will become in the years ahead. So let's run through four X-Planes in active development as we speak, as well as their intended outcomes and what implications they may have for aviation in general, and of course, air power in particular. And we'll start with DARPA's X-65 Crane, which is short for Control of Revolutionary Aircraft with Novel Effectors. Put simply, Crane aims to eliminate the need for primary moving flight control surfaces, things like ailerons, rudders, and elevators on aircraft. Now that may sound kind of dry, but if you're familiar with aviation technology, you probably already realize that this is a huge deal. It could really lead to the biggest shift in aircraft design since the inception of stealth more than a half century ago. The entire crane program is built upon the concept of active flow control, which put very simply means using a variety of technological systems to replace the moving flight control surfaces that we currently use to manage airflow over an aircraft and in turn the direction that it flies. Instead, active flow control relies on using one or more systems to do the same job without any real exposed moving parts. 
Now, there is more than one approach to skinning the active flow control cat, but Crane's approach seems to be routing puffs of air from the aircraft's jet engines through specific nozzles all over its fuselage to alter its trajectory in flight. And this concept was explained in depth in the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Academic Journal. But there are other approaches to the same premise, like a concept published in the Journal of Applied Physics that calls for using an array of electrodes on the the skin of the aircraft. These electrodes would produce an electrical discharge at very specific intervals and locations to quickly heat up the nearby air, thus changing its density and how it affects the aircraft passing through it. Now, regardless of how it's ultimately done, eliminating control surfaces in an aircraft would be a boon for stealth technology, but for hypersonics as well. Any seam or gap between control surfaces or body panels in a stealth aircraft can produce a radar return, thus compromising its stealth profile. Today's stealth aircraft go to great lengths to limit the radar return produced by their moving control surfaces, often by leveraging things like radar absorbent materials, even tape sometimes. But if you could eliminate those control surfaces entirely, it would not only improve stealth, it would reduce maintenance requirements and operating costs. But the implications for hypersonics could be even more significant. Maneuvering at hypersonic speeds is a massive engineering hurdle thanks to the huge amounts of pressure and friction produced by ripping through the atmosphere at Mach 5 plus. Using control surfaces that can manage this heat and pressure would be a massive challenge, but if instead you could use electrodes on the skin or puffs of air not unlike the chemical thrusters used by the space shuttle, well, that could take a mind-boggling challenge and just turn it into an incredible one. Of course, active flow control could also be a big deal for non-stealth and non-hypersonic aircraft by dramatically reducing the weight by eliminating all the systems required to manage flight control surfaces. That could improve speed, range, and payload capabilities. And depending on the type of system used in place of these flight control surfaces, it could mean fewer moving parts, which tends to mean fewer maintenance requirements. And that translates to higher readiness rates and lower overall operating costs. Renders of the X-65 released by DARPA thus far show 14 active flow control arrays positioned across an unusual coplanar joined wing with twin tails. And this aircraft is expected to begin flight tests in 2025. Up next, we have a platform we've discussed on this channel before, the X-62 Vista. In June of 2021, the U.S. Air Force announced that it was redesignating its NF-16D Variable In-Flight Simulator Aircraft, or Vista, as an X-plane, now known as the X-62A Vista. This heavily modified Block 30 F-16D Fighting Falcon is likely one of the most maneuverable fighters on the planet, thanks to its multi-axis thrust vectoring nozzle that allows its onboard flight computers to orient the outflow of the engine's thrust independent of the aircraft itself. But it isn't meant for dogfighting. Instead, the aircraft's unique onboard flight control system leverages those thrust vectoring capabilities to make this aircraft fly like any other jet in service today. In other words, from inside the cockpit of the X-62, it can feel like you're flying anything from a big and sluggish B-52 to a quick and nimble F-22 Raptor, and really anything in between. But what earned the Vista its new X-plane status wasn't its ability to mimic other aircraft. It was its ability to quickly accommodate artificial intelligence. In 2021, the Vista Simulation System, or VSS, flight control computer was completely replaced with a new one called System for Autonomous Control of Simulation, or SACS. Put simply, this system allows for the rapid installation of algorithm-based AI agents, as they're called, to not only test artificial intelligence fighter pilots, but to let these AI agents fly alongside real human operators in the cockpit. Now, the benefit of this effort is twofold. First, it's to provide a variety of artificial intelligence systems with real-world flight experience, learning directly from genuine fighter pilots. And second, it's to help the Air Force learn how to develop trust between human pilots and their AI-enabled co-pilots and wingmen. 
In February of this year, the Air Force announced that its X-62 Vista had not only been flying under AI control, but had successfully completed a series of air combat exercises over a two-week span last December. Perhaps just as importantly, the aircraft was able to quickly swap between different AI agents developed by different firms during this testing, allowing for more rapid maturation of multiple AI models. The broader AI teaming effort of the U.S. Air Force is disconcertingly called Skyborg, and it's continuing to progress thanks to these early successes with the X-62, with the Air Force now incorporating similar AI pilot agents into six more F-16s that are equipped with a full suite of modern combat systems. Ultimately, the progress made by the X-62 will help lead to AI-enabled drone wingmen flying alongside America's forthcoming Block 4 F-35, the Air Force's next-generation air dominance, and the Navy's FAXX fighters, respectively. Not to mention going on to equip just about all aircraft with far more capable AI autopilots. Up next, we have the X-61 Gremlin, which promises to turn America's cargo aircraft into drone-packing flying aircraft carriers. You see, as aircraft have become more broadly capable and, in turn, expensive, the U.S. has seen a consistent reduction in the total number of airframes in service since the end of World War II. The U.S. went from operating nearly 300,000 aircraft in the 1940s to right around 13,000 today. Now, those huge numbers were in no small part because aircraft themselves were not particularly survivable in contested airspace. Fielding planes in high volume volume allowed Uncle Sam to defeat enemy air defenses through sheer volume, simply throwing so many fighters and bombers into a battle space that it would be all but impossible to shoot them all down. Of course, these days, losing aircraft would be a much bigger deal, and it's with the understanding that losses are inevitable in a near-peer fight, the U.S. Air Force is now looking to return to overwhelming power through volume, using an approach that they call affordable mass. And that is where DARPA's X-61A Gremlin comes in. The X-61A is a low-cost airframe designed specifically to mature technologies associated with the launch and recovery of drones in flight. At 13 feet 9 inches long and carrying a wingspan of just 11 feet 5 inches, the Gremlin is about a third the size of an F-16 and can be deployed from the back of an airborne C-130. Powered by a single Williams F-107 turbofan engine, the X-61A can sustain speeds of around 460 miles per hour and cover ranges up to about 300 miles before being recovered by the same or another mothership cargo aircraft. In the not-too-distant future, drone swarms deployed by cargo aircraft could help saturate the airspace over a target, with some carrying electronic warfare equipment, others carrying munitions, and still more offering extended sensor reach for pricier crewed and uncrewed stealth platforms also operating in the area. While pretty capable, these airframes are cheap enough for the Air Force to consider them attritable. In other words, losing one in a fight isn't a big deal. In a real way, program Programs like the X-62 will eventually allow the U.S. to completely overwhelm enemy air defenses without breaking the bank or putting many pilots at risk, blotting out the sun like Persian arrows. In October of 2021, DARPA announced the first successful launch and recovery of an X-61 Gremlin from a C-130 mothership. Up next, we have the X-59 Quest, which is spelled in a way that copy editors hate. And this program's all about turning sonic booms into sonic thuds. You may not be aware of this, but it's actually illegal for most aircraft to fly faster than the speed of sound over the vast majority of the U.S., thanks to the risk of damage to personal property caused by sonic booms. Now, this rule may be broken occasionally by fighters tasked with intercepting wayward civilian or commercial aircraft, but NASA, the Air Force, and Lockheed Martin are working together to make this rule a thing of the past. The X-59's unusual name is a play on NASA's long-standing Quest, Q-U-E-S, for Quiet Supersonic Technology, SST. But to understand what makes the Quest special, we need to understand sonic booms. As an aircraft flies forward in the atmosphere, it creates pressure waves both ahead and behind it, not all that different from the wake created by a boat. 
These pressure waves travel at the speed of sound. So as an aircraft approaches that barrier, these pressure waves are compressed in front of the aircraft until they merge into a single shock wave that produces a sonic boom. Now, sonic booms sound a lot like a thunderclap to anyone down below, and the intensity and width of a sonic boom is dictated by the physical characteristics of the aircraft and how it interacts with the air it's passing through. The X-59 Quest aims to reduce that boom to a sonic thud, making supersonic flight feasible over populated areas. If successful, the X-59 effort could result in commercial and military aircraft that can regularly exceed the speed of sound over any populated region, shortening travel times significantly. Now, the value for this is often discussed in terms of commercial travel and logistics, but the truth is this program could also have some real defense implications. The U.S. has been moving away from aircraft that fly higher and faster faster for survivability in contested airspace since the F-117 Nighthawk proved the efficacy of stealth back in the 80s. But because of recent advances in air defense technology and the far-flung and austere nature of supporting counter-terror operations all over the world, there's been a renewed emphasis on speed, not only to complicate the air defense enterprise, but to enable the military to overcome what's commonly called the tyranny of distance. Supersonic flight over populated parts of the world could allow for better support of far-removed special operations elements, more rapid logistical support, and an improved ability to execute short-fused but high-value missions, like taking out a terrorist leader when they're spotted by other intelligence assets. Put simply, speed is back in vogue, and the X-59 could play a big role in helping it flourish. With a wingspan of just 29 and a half feet, a bit less than an F-16, the long and slender X-59 stretches 94 feet from front to back and is powered by a single General Electric F-414 afterburning turbofan engine, similar to the ones powering today's F-A-18 Super Hornets. And that's not the only place this unusual aircraft borrowed components from off the shelf. Its cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy all come from the Northrop T-38, and its landing gear comes from the F-16. The X-59 is expected to reach a top speed of Mach 1.5 and maintain a cruising speed of around Mach 1.42, while producing very little sonic boom thanks to its elongated but narrow airframe and specially positioned canards designed to prevent shockwaves from coalescing in front of the aircraft. If all goes according to plan, this X-plane will be able to breach the sound barrier while producing a thud that's only about as loud as closing your car door. The X-24 is scheduled to begin test flights over U.S. cities to gather data about noise starting next year. Now, it's of course important to remember that not every X-plane goes on to change the game. But even when these programs don't ultimately pan out, they still often produce technological breakthroughs that can give us a glimpse of the future of aviation. They can not only show us what today's cutting-edge technology is capable of, but where the Pentagon's priorities are for tomorrow. But maybe most importantly for airplane nerds like me, and probably like you if you've made it this far into the video, they're usually pretty cool to look at too. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.